Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about Starbucks. First, I'll go over history and then I cover some of the general environment factors. Historically, with the domain of the fast developing coffee market, Starbucks Corporation provided a new interpretation of contemporary coffee culture and transformed the routine coffee drinking process into an affordable luxury. The name Starbucks originated from the book by Herman Melville, Moby Dick, its famous logo being the twin tailed siren from Greek, Greek mythology. The name was chosen by the original founders, Jerry Baldwin and Zeb Segal, two teachers, and Gordon Boker, a writer. The chosen logo reflects the history of coffee, as well as the strong port roots of Seattle, the town where the first Starbucks coffee shop was opened in 1971. The image of the twin tailed siren carried a magical thing with a seductive mystery being exactly what the founders were looking for. The siren as a methodological figure is a storyteller and unique, inspiring founders to create something more than coffee. The older version of the design had a mermaid with beer bread, but in the newer version, the mermaid has become more conventional and her hair covers her body. Originally, the store was just selling coffee beans and coffee making equipment instead of drinks, which becomes famous much later. Since the time when the first Starbucks shop appeared in Seattle's historic Pike Place Market, the corporation managed to develop effective approaches in order to meet the consumer's demands for specialty coffee, cappuccinos, and lattes, to reconsider the possibility of franchising, to invent unique formulas of the balance between quality and the convenience, customizing the coffee beverages to every customer's taste. There were a number of turning points in terms of company's development and evolution, which should be outlined. 46 Starbucks coffee stores were established by 1989 in the Midwest and Northwest of the United States, roasting over 910,000 kilograms of coffee beans annually. The chairman, president, and CEO of the corporation, Howard Schultz, managed to develop and establish the major tendency in the coffee industry, launching a number of projects to strengthen the company's position. Among them was the installation of coffee, franchising a bookseller store, making them convenient places to enjoy a cup of coffee and meet with friends. Also, a number of new products were introduced by Starbucks, such as the Frappuccino and Starbucks ice cream, Pazzo tea, organic or fair trade coffee, Dini Line coffee drinks, and others. The last innovation was the Starbucks Blonde Roast. Today, Starbucks is, is the largest coffee shop chain, which has more than 18,000 stores in more than 60 countries. Now I'm going to go over general environment factors. When speaking of global factors, it's essential for every international company to take into account the culture diversity of the consumers for whom the products and services are provided, not only when doing business in the United States, but also when doing business abroad. In the case of Starbucks, the consumers range from young students to fine coffee consumers in the United States, France, China, and beyond. The products must meet the demands and expectations of all these diverse categories. They must also be a convenient choice for every customer. Also supporting the core tendency of organic and fair trade coffee as well as healthy eating trends is also essential for future success. It should be noted that necessary measures were already implemented by the companies surrounding these issues. For example, Skinny line drinks, which include low calorie and sugar free drinks, as well as refusal to use milk, which originated from REGH through the cows, have been in the practice for some time. Potentially, Starbucks could customize the targeting in order to attract more use by selling energy drinks or introduce different milkshakes and fruit beverages to attract children as well as families. It is important to note that Starbucks 
is now considered to be a household name of popular culture. It has also symbolized the rising role of corporations, service industries, and flexible wage schedules. However, such a status has a number of downsides since it um, predisposes the company to become a target for different anti-globalization and anti-Americanization movements. Numerous protests and campaigns are launched against the consumerism of the myth. These products take place mostly in Asian countries, Australia, Germany, Italy, and others, defending their authenticity and preventing the negative influence of materialists and consumerism. Before Starbucks store were established in China, the Chinese people rarely drank coffee. In order to adapt its brand to its culture, Starbucks emphasized that the company for, that the company provides not only coffee but also tea. This demonstrates the necessity to understand the international marketing environment of the nation in question before deciding to do business in that country. As for the political factor, since Starbucks operates business internationally, the political situation of each country they deal with should be taken into account, particularly the attitude of the authorities to foreign producers, political stability, tax regulation, and governmental bureaucracy. For each company, there is always a risk of being affected by political instability in the country they have chosen to do business. A primary example demonstrating this statement is India. Since in this country, government is especially unstable, there have been 10 major changes in the government during the past 20 years. These government processes were also accompanied by launching new laws and policies concerning different industries. Therefore, Starbucks' top management team must be vitally aware of what is happening. Politically, in each country that they operate, one of the obstacles Starbucks faces in this domain is its past unsuccessful political campaign, which triggered much critical response and many negative attitudes toward the corporation. To combat this, Starbucks now attempts to keep a high profile in politics. It openly supported Obama's presidential campaign in 2012, using different tools for drawing the voters' attention. It also offered a cup of coffee for free to those customers buying a drink for someone else. The message of such an action was to demonstrate the politicians that it's possible to work together effectively. Another example is the Starbucks action during the fiscal cliff when baristas wrote come together on the cup of the, on the cup to encourage a death sale. In addition, the company openly supported gay marriage and was involved in a gun rights debate. All of these campaigns received intensive attention and media coverage. However, they hardly address or influence any political problems, evoking only irritation for its phony attempts and media buzz. At the same time, Howard recently expressed support for an increased minimum wage within the United States, debating a lot of concerning this issue. Also pointed out that such a measure was a double-edged sword since the higher wage would result in lesser hiring of people by businesses. Currently, the wage of the average Starbucks barista is less than Obama's proposed variance. Such a figure is very called by Howard as misleading. In fact, the minimum wage issue has never subsided for Starbucks Corporation since the year of its foundation. This also translates to a global front, where Starbucks is known for creating jobs, incomes, and a boost to economies that would otherwise struggle desperately. However, in doing so, they must be vitally aware of the political situation in which nation they enter to do business. Thank you so much for your attention, if there is any questions.